welcome to the starting block. I'm Carly and this is Sydney. Hi, welcome to the show you want to know about. Now, life is full of opportunities for those who know where they're going as well as know where to look. Now, for the next 13 weeks, this is a show you don't want to miss. Our country's constitution promotes equal opportunities for all. That includes opportunities to be trained, educated and mentored to become that successful business owner you've always dreamed of being. Lomutla gesta uhlala na CEO we Services Sita. Sasive kwakuthi hulumene ubaphethele ini laba nelikhono kutema business. Siphindze futhi sihlangane nalaba laba tawukhetfwa kwakuthi bangenele lolu luhlelo. Kwakugcina bese sethula abafundzi labakhombisa inqobeke laphambili nasekutheni bangaba yingxenye yalabambalwa labangenele lolu luhlelo lwesitha. Kuyo phela i starting block. Yes, you've guessed it. Here on the starting block, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to become a successful entrepreneur. Yes, for the next 13 weeks, we're going to watch 12 ordinary people be transformed. And some of you might like to turn from nothing to something, mm. as they have the opportunity to learn everything they need to know to become a self-sustained business owner. Now, some will fare better than others. Mm. Some will be proactive and motivated, and others won't. Some might even drop out of the course. That's the life of an entrepreneur, survival of the fittest. <laughs> Sita. Hello, Ivor. Welcome to the starting block. Hi, hello. Hi, how are you doing? How's it? Good, good. Starting view, you guys got up here. Can I build my house right here? <laughs> right here, along with 90,000 other people. <laughs> Do you come up here often? Very often. Now, tell us, what is Services Sita all about, Ivor? Okay, there are 23 Sitas mm -hmm. established by the Minister of Labor in association with Business and Labor. Mm -hmm. And the job of Sitas is to take care of the industries assigned to them. So, for example, in our case, the Services Sita, we have 37 industries we're responsible for. And when, when I say responsible, I'm talking about training, I'm talking about development, I'm talking about making sure that there are service providers wherever our members are. So why did the Minister of Labor start up all the Sitas? It's not this Minister of, of Labor that started the CETAs, it's Tito Mbaweni when he was still Minister of Labor. Okay. And the purpose of CETAs is, is to essentially fill the gaps left by industry training boards of the past, which were voluntary structures, worked well in some industries, but across the entire economy basically let the economic structures down. So tell us about the learnerships that CETA offers. A learnership is an alternative route to a qualification. It's basically the, the occupational route to a qualification instead of simply sitting in a classroom and getting a piece of paper. And the beauty about a learnership qualification is that it's recognized by industry, which means that you're more employable, you have more relatable skills to what actually goes on in the real world of work. You mentioned skills. How do you go about developing people skills? Well, whenever we do training, and all training now gets registered on what we call the National Qualification Framework. So whenever we do training, there are three components. We, we look at the fundamental building blocks, literacy, numeracy. We then look at the core contextual stuff, uh, life skill, interpersonal skills, etc. And that's where we focus on people's skills. And then the third component, which is really the, the elective component of training, which is the, the job training, switch the machine on, uh, pick up a phone, answer the call, etc., etc. And what is the main goal of this particular NVC program? Well, this is new venture creation. And essentially what this learnership is about is it's about those people who've maybe had experience in a particular job or a particular industry mm -hmm. and believe that they're the, the right caliber of person to run their own business in that industry. And this is our investment in them for a year to, to get them to understand how businesses work and the intricacies, the finance, the marketing, the strategic stuff that goes together when running a business. And it's done under supervision so that you know, that we can really say that when we let them go, at the end of the learnership, they've had a year of being supervised into learning to run their own business. In this show, we're going to follow 12 candidates through this program that you're offering, the new venture creation program. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, we're looking at these 12 individuals, narrowed down from a, a much larger group of people who applied for the positions, and we're looking at them in terms of what their original ideas are uh -huh. and how they're going to put those ideas into a business plan, where they're going to get their money from, and, and do they have the capacity to convince people to invest in their businesses and then to convince people to buy their product or their services. So we're going to track them. And more importantly, we want to look at their emotions and what's going on in their head uh -huh. and their, their support structures, their families and their friends, and, and whether or not they're getting support from people who believe in them or don't believe in them. You know, a test of a good entrepreneur, a good business person mm -hmm. is can you get people to believe in you? And Without that, your business is a failure. Well, thank you very much, Ivan. Thank you. See you of the service. Thank you very much. very much. I think you've answered all our questions. I eh? think so, yeah. We sorted. <laughs>
baveleke base balenzela kona phela kokuthi lucwalingo lichubeke Waphele mathe emlonyeni uma siwabhekene nalo lucwalingo Bafundzi babehlolwa ukuthi ophela tibalo kanye nekufundza With us is Dr. Vainan Khursen, the head of the selection panel. Tell us a bit about the selection process. Well, the selection process starts with the IEB process, Independent Examinations Board, which gives us an indication of the level on which the candidates function. This sort of uh, tells us on uh, what level NQF-wise, National Qualifications Framework that is, mm-hmm. a learner is capable of developing, growing, learning, studying, etc. So tell me, is the IEB uh, course, is it the same as metric certificate? Or? IEB course really measures you in relation to the National Qualifications Framework. Mm-hmm. For example, the uh, National Qualifications Framework will start with level one and will go to level seven. Mm-hmm. And uh, somewhere in between is a metric certificate and a university degree, etc. All qualifications are now being benchmarked against this framework, so to speak. What is the best thing about the NBC program? I think the greatest thing about the new venture creation learnership is the fact that it gives you such a nice all-rounded business qualification. It's really quite integrated. If you've gone through an NBC program, not only will you understand marketing and finance, and human resources on an entry level, Mm -hmm. but you'll also be capable of putting together your own basic business plan. And I think it would really take you to the level where you can conceptualize a business very well. Mm Um, because it will give me the skills that I need to start up my own business. I thought it's going to help me somehow with my business skills. I wanted to grow uh, business-wise. Actually, to be self-employed. I've wanted to start a business from the beginning of this year. So I've been working on my own and that didn't go too far. So when this opportunity came up, I was like, well, let me get the skills and actually make it happen. Well, the NVC program, they offer you entrepreneurship skills. Well, that's the main reason I'm here. I want to open my own business of having an ICT, running internet cafe services, uh, repairing and servicing some computers. I, I didn't actually apply for it. Uh, I just sent my CV to the Department of Labor for a learnership. So they put me through to this learnership, but uh, I was still thankful because uh, it was in line with my idea. I want to open a career business. Events coordination. It's a recruitment agency. I now open a agricultural business doing farming on poultry and vegetables. I want to open up with uh, business skills so that I can provide people with knowledge with opening their businesses and improving it. I want to open a computer resource center, training center. That's where I'll uh, teach the community about IT skills. Um, I thought the, 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 the English was quite straightforward uh, when it came to the mathematics. Also a bit straightforward, but um, I did have a problem calculating uh, decrease and increase in percentages without a calculator, but, but that was also good. It was nice, but a little bit difficult, especially when it comes to maths. It was difficult, um, especially on maths, but if you gave yourself time to calculate, to use the amount, I think it was not that bad. It is simple, I don't want to lie to you, but I had a problem when, uh, with multiple choice. Well, the IB exams were difficult but not impossible. Some of the questions, I knew them since I did maths at school, and the easiest part was the English ones. Those ones, I am really sure that those were the ones that gave me an advantage. Well, it seems like there's a ton of talent in that room. I don't know how they're gonna choose the top 40 from those 80 candidates. Yeah. All I can say is I'm glad it's not my job. Well, I've read about so many entrepreneurs that started like, like these guys, mm-hmm. and a little bit of support and backing them really made it to the top. We'll take famous British entrepreneur, Sir Richard Branson. Yeah. He started his first business when he was just 16, 16. years old. And now he owns a ton of companies. Virgin Records. Oh yes, and Virgin Active. Yes, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Airlines, and so many others. Well, I think his ability to think big mm-hmm. and really like taking up new challenges as well what made him big. Well, let's go see if the selectors are ready to announce the final 40. Shabalala Mungameli Goodman. Masita Ubakeng. 
Apparently, it's really rato. Unfortunately, it didn't make it. Say, Mogres, as a smart team, I let's cut the children to the Cassi. Ratapani, Brian. Mutipe, Victoria. Sahaizu, Mectelin. Mushata, Tumo. Welcome on board. Nerves are strained as our 40 candidates are being prepared to be cut down to 25 who will make it through to the employer's interview run. Who's going to make it and who's going to go home? Well, that's the question on everybody's lips today. The thing about entrepreneurship is the spirit. That's what's most important. Are you going blonde on me? What are you talking about? Well, take Oprah Winfrey, for example. I mean, she has got no business qualifications whatsoever, but she's got that spirit. That's something special. And now she's worth over one billion US dollars. And if you mention her name anywhere in the world, people know exactly who you're talking about. Oh, so you're saying it's the spirit of entrepreneurship that counts? Exactly. You don't need a degree or diploma to be an entrepreneur. Well, I wonder how our candidates are doing. All right, you guys are in the top 40. How does it feel? Yo. Yeah. Oh. Well, congratulations <laughs> to yeah, make, well, making it. Yes. You're halfway there. Yes. Like, well, actually, there was a 1,000, down to 80, to down to 40. Mm -hmm. Now, today, you're going to be chatting to some big people on the selection panel. What do you, what do you think it's going to be like in there? Hey, I don't have a picture, but I, one thing that I know is going to be tough. Gulen Gulungwa neba funzi la basholo. Kwa bang labang ema shumla mane gupela nje la baket fa gwe guti. Ba kubegele eskabe ni ses bili sa lulu vivinyo. La pake si mo sa se si a shinja ga kulu. Ne mi puto ya se iya chula. Papa King, you yet to talk to us and motivate your application for NVC learnership. Yes. Get stuck in. Tell us about it. Okay, uh, the reason why I'm here is because uh, I want to be empowered in order to open my own business, business to become an entrepreneur and also to employ other people. Are you nervous for working for this interview? Uh, no. You shouldn't be, eh? You can just relax and take it step by step and tell us what is your business plan? Uh, I want to open an internet cafe that includes uh, computer repairs and also sales of end-user equipment. Where do you want to open this? Uh, in Soweto. Tell the panel your business plan. A recruitment agency. A recruitment agency. Yes, sir. Where are you going to put this recruitment agency up? In uh, different banks. But in my... different banks, she says? Yes. Where? First National Bank, where I was working. Yeah? Yes. Have you spoken to them about this? No, I haven't. Do you think they'll go for it? Yes, because I know the manager. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How are we feeling this afternoon? Yes. Nervous, nervous, nervous and nervous. Ingabe Banga Kilamangeno Good Top 25. Well, they just announced the top 25 in that room there, and this is the only way out. So we're going to chat to them and see how they did. Yeah, let's find out who made it and who didn't. Oh, I hear some noises. Here we oh, come. Here's the first Here one. All right, we have to talk to you. Did you make it? Did you make it? Yeah, I made it. That's Congratulations. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm not Melody. So you can help. It is good to have nothing for you, and I'm um, grateful for this opportunity that they gave me. So what do you have to prepare awesome. tomorrow? Uh, I have so, to prepare so, 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 so. a uh, um, okay. business plan, anyway. Business plan. Yeah, yeah just a rough note. Better have you over all the way first, I got Peter Plus. Yeah, sure. All right. This man has got a big smile on his face. I have to talk to him. Did you make it? Yes. Congratulations. So we'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Good sure. luck with tomorrow, and I hope you have your business plan ready. Okay. Cool. I'm not doing nothing. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. awesome. Thanks. So, 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 did you make it or not? Yes. Nah, no, so, 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 um, um, well, business plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got mine in place, so we've been intact, and then um, well, we'll have to see what they need from me tomorrow, and I'll 
definitely have it. I know some other person who casual flies for next. See why as well as so any time you want to talk to me, I'm not going to be happy. It's getting late, you guys. Better get home and good luck for tomorrow, guys. Okay. Morning of the interviews, our top 25 candidates are all here and ready to impress with their business plans. Eh? Oh yes, and they all came in their formal attire, just like us. Mm, you can yeah. check out the day on today. We thought we'd dress apart and fill with them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go check out their business plans. Uh, I don't need to have it. I'm not going to present a business plan by showing it. I know most of it because it's been done since the beginning of this year. I think. I'm not going to be as tense as yesterday because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like they want to know more about what you think of your business idea and stuff. So it's all about, I think, what you have planned for your business. So that's what we're here for. When we to today, I'm going to sell my business to them. I'll, I'll make sure that I, I sell it to them. I express myself mm -hmm. and make sure that I get this thing. <laughs> Well, I think it went very well. Um, we've actually got some good caliber of learners. Well, they're not learners yet, actually. Some good candidates that came through. Um, I was very impressed with uh, quite a few of them, actually. Madupe struck me as being a very good businessman. I think that he came through very well in the interview. He was very well dressed. He was very confident. And I think he stands a very good chance of going through to the finals. You take someone like uh, Tunani, for the example. It's pretty slow because I didn't market myself very well. And I was a bit uh, relaxed on the market side of it. Tunani, also a two and a half candidate. Same explanation. Yeah. Well, I saw some uh, cries and some oohs and some ahs and some frowns. But after all, I think it went well. Well, I can't wait to find out what the outcome of the interviews is going to be. <laughs> my money's still on Rodney, though. I still got my money on Lerato, but it's time to go to the boardroom now. Libanda le bogena le lusele lo guti nga ba funds la selta la pans gutos kazese la gwe guti dela le se chendi swago e kete ni ba funds la ba longe le bungene la lo lusele. Dain aunt and ladies, welcome. Um, you've had the opportunity to engage in what I believe is a very significant recruitment and selection process. You've looked at 1,000 candidates around the country, and you've narrowed that down to a list of 25 and eventually 12 people. Vainant, Peter, having engaged in recruitment and selection of this nature, what went right and what went wrong? Well, in terms of what went right, I think what really worked for me is the presentations that the candidates came up with. We narrowed them down from 1,000 to eventually 12, as you, as you say, and. Uh, we did that by putting through them through a process, a three-tier process of presentation. And it was amazing to see how people improve in terms of the presentations that they make about themselves and their businesses from round to round. Our experience has been that not everybody can be an entrepreneur and that it takes personality and that the majority of people are personality dead in any country, in any culture or environment. What was your experience of the candidates you, you examined? Well, when I interviewed them, um, they were a mixed batch. There were some learners that, were, that had a personality, that walked into the room, they had a presence, they were dressed smartly, they um, were confident, um, and they were ambitious. They knew why they were there, and they wanted to get out of the learnership what they could. But then there were others that didn't really care. Um, they came in, they were very quiet, they were introverted, so it was very mixed. Um, but I, I selected the learners that had the confidence that, that could stand up in front of a group of people and talk and give a presentation. To me, that is somebody that would be a good entrepreneur. Statistics in South Africa show that for every new business created, we're looking at between seven and 10 new jobs created. So essentially, you're projecting between 60 and 80 new jobs created because of these 12 individuals going through this new venture creation learnership planet. As long as one qualifies that prediction, because that number of employees certainly should take into consideration indirect jobs that are created, much like one tourist uh, visiting South Africa creates X number of jobs. Certainly we don't have, uh, when one person comes over from Europe to visit, three or four people get employed. 
but it's indirectly through economic stimulus, yes, I would go with that. Eight businesses, Vena. So there, there are four that are falling by the, way, by the wayside. What's the reason for that? Not necessarily. You've always got to allow for a margin of error, and people will fall out in a program such as this. You, you can never start with 12 and guarantee that you're going to finish with 12. All sorts of things can happen to learners, not necessarily their academic inability or their inability to start a business, but their personal lives can also change. So one cannot guarantee the circumstances of every individual's life. Fair enough. So there's a four out of 12 attrition that you're projecting for all of those reasons. Are, are these eight businesses that you're looking at sustainable? How do you know they're sustainable? You know, I'm very glad to, to answer a question on sustainability. In this country of ours, we always talk about assisting people to start businesses, but in fact, very little is done, A, to start those businesses, because as you know, startup capital, it's easier to raise 50 million for an existing venture than what it is to raise 5,000 for a new venture. And secondly, once a, a, a new business is in fact established, what mechanisms really exist to mentor and develop and grow those businesses? What hand-holding is really out there for our young entrepreneurs in this country? You've looked at these candidates and you've looked at these 12 final new venture creation learners. Are these guys capable of picking up at the end of the learnership and keeping their business afloat? To, to quote one of our top, top, top learners, finishing the program, I'm saying to him, so Solani, what business are you gonna start? He says to me, sir, having gone through this program, I believe I should work for somebody for six months, 12 months before I start my own business. Is it, a, is it a youngster that can't start his own business? No. Is it somebody that is taking that route because he doesn't really have the guts to start his own business? No. Young